This is the motto of the show, Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, but goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God, Bible believing people. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ in vain He suffered by His death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase with iron heel and iron hand the Roman popes rule the land those ignorant of history may be swept into apostasy we won't be loved by Rome's sweet life with fifty million reasons why Salvation is by faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone. A sovereign God give faith to man. Salvation's in the Maker's hand. This gospel offends Rome today. They offer up another way, a counterfeit. A compromise, beware the ancient papal lie. There's such a cloud of witnesses who by grace died in their Lord. Recall their memory to say, by the same faith we live today. Hello everybody, this is Jörg Lissmann once again from YouTube channel Jörgler66 with another episode on Hour of the Truth. We have today the 23rd of July, exactly two months to go until the Antichrist, Pope Francis I, will come to the United States of America and tell the American people what their future is going to be, whether they like it or they don't, because they all are slaves to him, like I also over here in Europe am the same. The puppet master, the slave master, comes in two months. It's time for people to wake up. It's time for people to understand what a Jesuit is, because this Pope is a Jesuit of the false oath of the oath of induction, that famous oath that when um, the Loyola read that to the Pope for the initiation, to get the initiation of the Jesuit order, the Pope cried out, Hoc est digitus Dei, means in English, this is the finger stroke of God. And dear brothers and sisters, if you ever come to read the Jesuit Oath, which is not, which is not uh, very hard to find. You can even find that on my channel. I made a video only on the analysis of that oath. Then you know that that has nothing to do with the God of the Bible, but everything to do with the God of Romanism. Anyway, the Pope is coming in two months. We will probably talk here and there a little bit more of it. And in the meantime, we are going to try to do broadcasts to bring the people a little bit more knowledge on the Jesuits. That's why we already, since a few weeks, are doing readings of the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy. 
That is a booklet that my brother Walt Stickel from Oregon over there in the United States of America put together, originally a 55 pages book by Dr. Ronald Cook. But he added a foreword and he added so many things taken from other books that it has become a book on its own. And I want to congratulate Walt for doing that. It's a very good job that he did in there. Although when we were reading, we saw here and there that needs a little bit editing yet, but that's okay because, you know, we are not computers and we are not rich. We are just simple, normal people. And those make here and there sometimes a mistake. So last week uh, we went into the part of the book uh, called The Conspiracy of Misdirection. And as you probably saw on my video channel, Joggler66, I uploaded also another video uh, with the same, uh, almost the same title that was a broadcast Walt and I did on Block Talk Radio in uh, May, uh, where we were talking about... Uh, Edward Griffin and what he said and about the different American presidents. If you didn't watch that, then I advise you to go to my channel and watch that video from Mystery Babylon News Radio that I uploaded there a few days ago. It's really worth the while. But before we continue on the conspiracy of misdirection, um, first I want to introduce to you my brother in Christ, Walt Stickle, who set up the skull and... Um, who is my co-host today, and I very much and very warmly welcome you, Walt. And also I want to say, say thank you to our listeners who are online with us, listening live to the show, and enjoy it, and I hope enjoy it. <laughs> Criticism is always welcome if you have something to criticize. But in the meantime, Walt, how are you doing over there? Well... Fine. Greetings and good evening uh, to the Belgian NATO commander in Belgium there. You're talking to Bandonia here in uh, Romerica. But, you know, uh, the last – I want to get something – you know, I don't claim to be a radio personality or, or I don't have a broadcasting degree. But, you know, doing this broadcast and listening – to what's going on on different broadcasts has um, made me really be real careful of what I say. You know, I, I don't. Now, there's. I'm, we're teaching. My my uh, research has been into history and the Jesuits, and what we're trying to do is put the word. Jesuits in people's vocabulary so they can see their history. And, you know, I want to start off with Isaiah 520. You know, the Jesuits have a saying, black is white and white is black. And uh, in the Bible, in Isaiah 520, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And then we have, in the times we live in right now, is, you know, this is in Second Timothy, Chapter 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, and disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You know, that, and, in, and in Romans, you know, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Now, you know, when somebody goes to the mic, like myself, whatever I say, you know, uh, i I, I got to be assured of what I'm saying and not be like... Uh, 
You just can't pull something out of your hat. Where do you have the authority to say that the papacy is the Antichrist? Is you can't you you know you can't just pull. You have to have some authority, not Walt's authority. So you know it's, this is something I want to I, I want to uh, get off my chest because it's uh, it's something. And when I start this, understand I, I want to bring up Kent Hovind. And uh, don't think for a minute, yes, I might have some little criticism about Kent Hovind, but Kent Hovind has been a blessing. I remember four or five years ago, a friend of mine giving me a series of his tape, of his DVDs. And I listened to him, <laughs> I probably listened to him two, three times that winter. Very, very interesting. And then we know that Ken, he Ken Hovind has just got out of prison here the last two weeks. He spent nine years in prison. And his, his teaching expertise is evolution versus creation. Well, this is what's been on my mind. And this, is, this really stung me yesterday. But I got a friend, you know, that got straight A's in college. And, you know, he he would never come on the air and, and boast about his straight A's because he, all he says is he has a, he had a good memory. But the reason reason I, I'm, I'm, I'm bring, bringing this up and, and what Ken Hovind is in our, in our is your mind is because is because, you know, the word Jesuit, oh, I, first of all, for, forgive me, last night, just before I was going to go to bed, and there was a two-hour debate, and I've watched many of them, a debate uh, with a professor at a university. I forget what university he was at. But let me paint a picture. I mean, remember, my friend, he used to always talk about my friend was straight A's. He would always call, and we would get into a conversation about creation and evolution. Well, you know, Walt, you know, I never went to college, and and I used to have bees. And, man, I'll tell you, in the spring of the year, uh, when I was out there working with my bees and pulling honey off my bees, uh, you know, you didn't have to tell me about evolution. When I used to pop those beehives in the spring of the year, I tell you, the hair on my neck would stand up. It, I, I would just feel kind of numb because of what everything that was going on in that beehive. And I realized that I was just seeing the, outs, the, the, outs, the outer workings, and I was just accumulating, getting the benefits of, of the honey. So, so, so. After, you know, after my friend, you know, kept educating me on this, he kept bringing this evolution up, and I, I, I got kind of wore out. I never said anything, but last night when I watched Ken Hovind in this debate with this evolutionist, I'm telling you, it's insane. I actually felt sorry for this professor. I actually felt sorry for this professor. Some of the things he was saying, and 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 and, and Kent did a terrific job. I mean, I mean, you know, how, how do you deal with stupidity? How do you be modest with stupidity and insanity? Evolution is completely insane. Now you say, well, why are you talking about this? Well, we're talking about the Vatican global conspiracy here. Because who, and, 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 and this student asked the evolutionist about how the Big Bang worked. Listen, I can't paraphrase and try to tell you what that man said. But it was insane. It was literally insane. 
Now, why am I talking about this? Where did the Big Bang come from? It come in York. You, if you know his name, you can say his name. I can't pronounce his name, but anyway, we all know. We all know that a Jesuit is the one that introduced the Big Bang. Oh, that was Lemaitre. Yes, a Belgian yes. Jesuit in the beginning of the 1900s. And mm. it's the and it's the Jesuits. Back to the verse, you know, calling evil good and good evil, darkness for light and light for darkness. They're the ones that started this evolution creation. Now, why is it important? Because my my brother, my brother in Christ, you know, his sister went to college. But she wasn't success, as successful. They destroyed her mind. And many, many, this is, this, when you, when I was watching this last night and realizing that every single university, every single university is teaching this. And, and see, what, what they do is they take your faith away immediately. By inter- and, and it's not against the law, like Kent says, but if a, if a professor starts teaching creation, he is going to be finding another job. And this is so prominent in our society. This is how they destroyed the faith of this country. You, listen, not everybody was in church. Not everybody. But this, we, had, we had morals in this country. But when, when you take God, and like Kent, is a, he, 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 he does a tremendous job in showing you what happens when you take and you enter, what evolution does to a country. The Third Reich was an example. <laughs> And and so, you see, and what the thing the thing about it is in the in the I, my heart is kind of heavy because of Walt. You get they, they get so close to the truth. Evolution and creation and this whole debate is all about Rome. Even the evolutionists brought up the Pope, and that the Pope. Was uh, was evolutionist? The evolutionist did. And of course, Kent had a good answer to that. He said, "Well, I don't believe too much of anything that Rome says." But listen, now this is where I'm going to share something. I'm going to share something, and I'll tell you, my friend York, my brother York, was the first one that never went off on me when I shared this. It was back at about 1997, driving truck, that I heard a lecture on heliocentric and geocentric. Heliocentric is that we go around the sun. We travel 66,000 miles an hour, and we travel 19 miles per second, and we make one perfect lap around the sun once a year. That's heliocentric. And by the way, and by the way, um, Kent Hovind supports the heliocentric I'm, system. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm yeah, getting okay. There. I just wanted to tell you that. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because I, because this is what got me going. This is what got me thinking. I said, w- w- Walt Stickle, you know, he, he's a co-host on the Hour of the Truth, a retired truck driver. What does he know? What does he know? I'm just a stupid mind, wine merchant. What do I know? And, you know, but so I'm bringing up this heliocentric, geocentric, because it is important. And I want to make one other statement here. I want to make something that I was real. In other words, I can be bold in something when I know it's in the Bible. I can be dogmatic. And this is what it is. When you, you and myself, 
we've all heard we want to call this a planet. It's called, and I hear people all the time call it planet Earth. This is not a planet. Now, how do you say, where do you get your authority, Walt? Well, the Bible calls this the Earth 987 times. Yes, and the planet in the Bible is explained as a wandering star. That's right. And the earth is not a wandering star. The earth is fixed. And, and sorry to interrupt you here, Walt. But no, no, that's, no, that's, that's, no, I'm glad you did. I'm glad there's, you did one, there's one point in the Bible where it is absolutely doubtless that the earth is stationary. And that is in the book of Joshua, where he went on to go into the promised land and um, fight the heathen nations there to get the promised land for the Israelites. And there was one battle taking up, I don't know, three days or something like that. They needed, more, they, they needed more daylight. They needed more daylight, and God stopped the sun in its way. And it's described exactly that way. The sun, the sun stopped its way. So then the earth has to stand still because God stopped the sun from its orbit, or whatever you want to call it, from its moving anyway. This is the best evidence, at least one of the best evidences you can find in the Bible for a stationary earth. But uh, well, go on, Walt. Yes, and that is that is the most important. And so the yesterday morning, I'm listening to Ken Hoven. It's 38 minutes. He's got a Ken Hoven official YouTube. And uh, and listen, I'll continue to listen to Ken Hoven. No, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I am going in the process of finding an email address and an address because I, I don't want to condemn this man. I'm not condemning this man, you understand, because this, this is where I'm going with this. See, the Bible says that this is geocentric. Now, not Walt Stickle. I got a book called The Earth is Not Moving by Marshall Hall. He passed away a couple of years, and I haven't had a chance to really devour this book, but I've, I've got parts of it. The Bible mentions mo a motionless earth 67 times. In other words, it says the sun is rising and the sun is setting. It means what it says. It means what it says. Now, now this is the thing. Now, now he was answering questions that people were sending him on YouTube, and one of them he's getting a lot of questions on heliocentric, geocentric, and the reason why one of the fellows that helped him when he was in prison uh, has mentioned geocentric. See, you know. So, but he said this. Kent said, "I am strongly heliocentric." Now that didn't bother me. He's listen. That didn't bother me. But when he's used a couple Bible, vas Bible verses, like in, in Psalms, that the earth is fixed, it's stationary, I mean, it's, it's stable. I mean, there's a couple. He used Jesuit casuistry to go around it. But he's not going to go around Joshua. And the only thing, if I was asking Kent Hoven, I'd say, Kent, you do realize that heliocentric is a theory. Now, he has his right, and I believe in freedom of conscience, and Kent Hovind is entitled to a much, as much freedom of conscience than Walt, this Walt. But I will not allow anyone to say that it's a fact. All a Galileo had was a telescope. Galileo was nothing but an modern-day Al Gore. And Isaac Newton went, went, went the same route. They hijacked science right after the Bible was printed. And the reason why they hijacked the Bible was to discredit it. 
and it paved the way for evolution creation. Because I've, I've read not all of the book of The Earth is Not Moving by Marshall Hall. And see, they used Rome. They, Rome put him in house arrest for a while. But, you know, I think he died in house arrest. But it, 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 was, it was Rome who got the earth moving 66,000 miles an hour, traveling 19 miles per second. They put stationary, there's, there's geosynchronized satellites up there. And this last bit of blurb about the flat earth. They, they, they want to say that there's no satellites up there. Well, I work for May Trucking, and I've seen when they lost a truck, a, st a truck got stolen out of a truck stop, they called up GPS, which is government. The United States government loans that to the whole world. That's where, who runs the GPS, is the United States government. I seen a picture with my own eyes of that truck. Now, they don't got a camera on every corner. That picture of that truck was taken from the air. What year now, was that? When I was driving truck? Yeah. Well, it was about 1997, 1998 when I seen that photo. So we're talking about more than 15 years ago, a technology that they are selling us now, that is possible, has been possible, and you can accord to that because you can, you saw that, that was possible in 1997, 1998. And we all have Google what, Earth. What do you think, what kind of technology do they have today when they could, that or when they could see that already in the 90s? They can read a, they can read a, the, the, the text off of, a, off of a cigarette package. <clears throat> now, now the thing, the thing I want, I want to comment, it, 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 because I have to question myself, and this is another thing. The reason I'm sharing this, this is my fellowship, okay? Because now you can send me an email and say, Walt, I think you fell out of the trailer this morning. You, you, you got your right to say that, see? But, but, when when you when we look and another thing Ken Hoven believes in, he believes in that we went to the moon. We didn't go to the moon. There's so much evidence of that now that it's not even debatable. You know. Now listen, is this making Ken Hoven terrible not to listen to Ken? No. Man, if you want to get some some good creation science real science you're you're going to, you know you're going to you, you listen to Ken Hoven but Kent Hoven is when he says that we are heliocentric he's another modern day Al Gore now listen listen that doesn't mean you know that doesn't mean that that uh, that Ken Hoven now Ken Hoven and the place where I'm going next now is this Ken Hoven has been or is going to be on the Hegman's broadcast. Let me tell you about the alternative media. I'm not picking on the Hegmans, but they're not going to have anyone to come on their broadcast and talk about history. They're just not going to allow us. And listen, let me tell you when you talk about history. I said this a year ago, and I didn't realize it, that it was profound. But if you don't know anything about the Jesuits, and you're not talking about the Jesuits, you're not talking about history. History in the Jesuits, it's, it's just history. And I, got, I come across this this morning. A friend shared this with me. Governmental. You've heard the word governmental? 
Well, that's that's another word for governmentality. It's kind of a, a play on words. Governing mentality. Secularism. I just described the Jesuits. Just described the Jesuits. They are the ones that are governing governments. Not gov- not just the United States. You do a Google search on the president of the Brazil and, and the Pope, and you're going to get a picture of the, of the president and the Pope. I, I spent a whole weekend one time. I, I did 24. I got it up on my web page. The rulers of the world, I, 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 who rules, I forget. Uh, uh, rulers of the earth, I think I got it up there underneath that, you know. I, I could have went on. I could have put 50, 60. You know, they go to Rome. Now, now this is, now this is, this is the. Enough for eating pizza, eh, Walt? No, no, they don't go there to eat pizza. They go there to, to, to meet the Pope, to kiss his ring, to get their marching orders. You know, and, and, um, and, and so, you see, you see the thing of it is, this is, this is why I'm going to be contacting Kent Hovind, because Kent has got a voice. York and I are limited. The, and, and let me give you an example. The people that are listening to this broadcast are researchers. The people in this, the people in this, 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 this call today, I'm not telling them anything they don't know. Two years ago, I had a man from Pasco drive 500 miles on a motorcycle to come up and see me. Why did he do it? He just called me up the other night. Because he's got no one to talk to. You, the people that are in this call and are listening to Hour of the Truth are here for some fellowship, to hear some like-minded people. And listen, if Walt is saying something is not correct, he needs to be contacted. He needs, he needs to correct himself. That's why if you listen to most of what I say, is my thing is kind of is history. Is I quote history. Here, here, here's a perfect quote of history. In 1776, the Roman Catholic Church got civil and religious rights with the Declaration of Independence. That's a that's a fact. Two years ago, I was challenged on that, and I did. I wasn't bold enough to stand. The Declaration of, in, of Indulgence uh, in, that, was, that was written in England in 1680 in 1687 is the same thing. A hundred years later, what they what they couldn't do in 1687, they were successful to do in 1776. Go to my website. Go to Untold History and click on a on a on a interview with Chris Pinto and. Chris Pinto was on Tom Fress's Inquisition update. I noticed this this month has been downloaded. People are still listening to that. There's some history in that little little 45 minute broadcast. I mean, it, it was it was a tremendous broadcast. I mean, Chris Pinto is no different than Walt Stickler. Any, I mean, he was asked the right questions, and it just fell together. See, the Declaration of Independence is the same thing as the Declaration of Indulgence. It's just history. See, it's just history. And then, now my other piece of authority, listen, there's a lot of people that are scripturally more able to teach the Bible than myself. But on some things, Walt, you know, I flew airplanes. I was a beekeeper. Drove truck. You know, I had enough ability. And my, and my always 
it was always my biggest factor, like when I was a pilot, was my communication skills. I mean, I have a little speech problem once in a while, and I stutter. But when I was a pilot, and I was getting people into my airplane, I learned that was my strongest part of me of my pilot duty, is I put people to ease. I didn't do anything stupid. I was real. When I made a turn and when I take the power off, why? Because I didn't want a bad experience. And I was able to communicate. Well, this is what I'm, I'm starting to, as you have to understand, there's a lot of people in this broadcast. I, I see the Buckeye State is represented here. And I know that they have read Romanism and the Reformation. Understand, that book set me back. That book set me back. Because I realized I had heard Tom Fress pound the desk, and you, and sometimes people say, "Well, I think that Tom Fress he overdoes things." And I realized that Tom Fress was just mimicking the reformers. You see, every single one of, and you, I want you to understand, and everybody does that in this, in. Uh, on this call, the number one thing that has been taken away from us, is, that is that has put the fire out of the pro- Protestants, is futurism. And that's what he, Henry Grattan Guinness made it so clear of who the papacy is and what they're all about. Well, we can sit on a three-hour... T- Broadcast, we can talk about the globalists and the elite and the Bilderbergers and the Nephlons, the monsters and the giants, and on and on and on. Now, this is where I'm going, and we can talk about evolution creation. But who? You see, Kent Hovind is a futurist. Now, the reason he doesn't talk about Rome, because he's really not believing what the Reformers taught. He's also friends friends with Chuck Missler. He stated that in a video that I was watching this afternoon, and I sent you the link on. um, It's in his uh, Q&A session, Dr. Kenthoven, Part 72 of Creation Science Seminar. It's a three-hour Documentary. I still have 30 minutes to watch, but here he goes explicitly into um, that he likes Chuck Missler, talked a lot without him, and he calls him his friend. And uh, Chuck Missler is a Jesuit. And, see, I think that Ken Hoven, I think Ken Hoven, I think God hasn't, has, he's not finished with him. He's got a voice now. Can you imagine if Kent Hovind came out and pinned the tail on the donkey? That's 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 my that's my faith and hope that I, I haven't ruled out Kent Hovind. I see his courage. That man didn't get dampened by nine years of prison. That man is just as much fire. I mean, I, I could see that he's been aged, but we all do that. And he just—he didn't just sit in prison and, and twiddle, twiddle his thumbs. He wrote thirty-seven books. But I found out listening to him yesterday. I found out yesterday that he, from when he was sixteen years old, he's been taught this futurism from a from a from a child. You realize how hard that is to get out? Here old Walt never had that lie taught to me, so it was easy to get rid of because I never had it. So how can, how can I criticize Ken Hovind? I'm not judging Ken Hovind's salvation, but 
I'll tell you what, in less than two months, we have the man of sin, the son of perdition, coming to speak to our, our joint session of Congress. That organization, Rome, and Daniel tells us that Rome will be the last one, in, the last empire to rule. That's where we get our authority. That's where the reformers got their authority. They got it from the Bible. And these, you see, you see people that are preaching futurism are preaching Roman Catholicism. It tells us the whole world's going to be deceived. What a better way to do it than talk about a future Antichrist when the Antichrist is alive and well and coming over here on the 23rd of September. Now, you know, I'm not angry. I, I, I have to admit that a little peanut walled. I, 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 I had a man I met in Brunswick. I sent him a book. He he. He called me up. He was having trouble printing it. But anyway, he ended up printing eight books, and he's, and he's distributed eight books. And, and, and this man that called me up from Brunswick, I felt like I'd known him all my life. He knows who the enemy is. See, see it's not just a, 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 a you know... Henry Grant and Guinness didn't write that book and, 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 and pin, pin all the trouble on the papacy just so he could write, so he could, so he could sell books. At the time he wrote that book, people still knew who the Antichrist was. Now, now, my, I'm going to find out where I can get an email and I, I'm going to be contacting. I want to send Ken Hovind a couple books. You can't judge a man. You can't. Ju- I mean, but 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 see, but 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 see the pressure that Satan has got on the world, and where does it come? Ever learning, but never. Where where is? I think I got that right here. Yeah. You know, you know, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. But the one I want is always, I can't find it right now, is, is, uh, uh, well, you look it up. Ever, I'm going to no, no. take over. You look it up. I'm going to take over because I have to say a little bit also because you hijacked my first 45 minutes, Walt. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. And we only and got two. No, no, that's, that's no problem. But um, I still have something to say, too, because when you go into the discussion uh, of um, creation versus evolution, I watched a documentary called 101 Science Facts that the Bible declared long before science. And one of the interesting questions, the most interesting question that you are often uh, confronted with, not only when you talk to evolutionists, but, you know, just a question to ask your father or mother or friend or brother or, or mother or, uh, or, or wife or whatever. Who was first, the chicken or the egg? That is quite an interesting question, and how can you ever answer that when you don't have the Word of God? And and let's answer that. The chicken egg dilemma is solved in Genesis 1, the first book of the Bible, verses 20 to 22. Read them for yourselves. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? This question has plagued philosophers for centuries. The Bible states that God created birds with the ability to reproduce after their kind. Therefore, the chicken was created first with the ability to make eggs. Yet, evolution has no solution for this dilemma up to today. And there are also other interesting points, like we are talking today, not specifically just this day, but I mean in these days, in these days, often about the so-called homosexuality, sodomites, 
And even this kind of sexual promiscuity is dangerous and uh, is talked about in the Bible, telling you what was first, the chicken or the egg. And then I went over to sexual promiscuity today called the homosexual agenda or the gay agenda or LGTTI, I don't know all the different things they have there with the sexual. But this is also written in the Bible. Sexual promiscuity is dangerous to your health. 1 Corinthians 6.18 and Romans 1.27 state this. The Bible warns that, quote, He who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body, unquote. And that those who commit homosexual sin would, quote, receive in themselves, unquote, the penalty of their error. Much data now confirms that any sexual relationship outside of holy matrimony is unsafe. And the results you see here over, uh, over this in the last few years is, of course, HIV and all the other sexual diseases that are taken there. Anyway, from that uh, documentary um, that I watched, 101 Science Facts that the Bible declared long before scientists, um, is an interesting one to watch. It's seven parts of, I think, 15 minutes each. But um, the first few parts are really the most interesting ones. Yeah. And uh, when you watch these, you will, have, uh, you will have an armor that when you go into a discussion, that you can shoot, 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 and until they cannot answer anymore, because they can twist the truth as long as they want. They cannot hide it when the truth wants to come out. And the truth is written in the Bible. By the way, the 1611 King James Bible. Yes. And I just wanted to add, that which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, let's don't, don't make, make clear. It, it, it took a rooster and a hen. And, and, and that's, that's if and you look at creation, God created two of each, and, and the ability to create, to recreate. You know, it, you know, it, you know, in that 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 old story, which came first, the chicken or the egg? We, there's an answer to it. See, it was the rooster, and then God created a hen. He created a man, and then He created a woman. A woman. See, I believe, I believe. In a six-day creation, just like Ken Hovind. See, I believe literally in a six-day creation and rested on the Sabbath. People say, well, you know, you know, the Sabbath is, uh, every day is the Sabbath. Every day is, every day is, every day is the Sabbath. Well, well, if that was the case, we wouldn't have been created. If God hadn't it rested for all seven days, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have be created. So anyway, that, that is a good, and it, it, the, the, the Bible is very scientific. And they, that's, the, that's the reason I brought this up, the heliocentric, geocentric, is because, see, see, I realize now that I'm not. And there are a lot of people out there that realize that the only time we move is during an earthquake. You know, I mean, it's, it's not, not every, but, but they got control of the academics. They control the books. They control the curriculum. And that, and that debate that I seen with Ken Hovind last night, all of a sudden just opened up everything to me. How, how insane it is. I couldn't go. I mean, Ken Hovind made him look so silly that it was embarrassing. They, 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 they uh, profess always learning, but never coming to the truth. They're always learning, but they never come to the truth. Because the truth cannot be found in them because they don't base it on the Word of God. 
they they they're they're like a boat without a rudder. I mean, I mean, when you look out, when you look out, you know, I I got to tell a quick story and we'll end it and we'll get on this. But I had a I had a customer call me up here when I was ISP. I used to uh, connect people uh, dial up. I had an ISP before all the different connections came in. So anyway, this gal calls up and she wants a connection, and you know, and I'm talking to her on the phone and she knew I was a Christian and and uh, she got into creation, you know. And I, I, I grabbed a hold of a pen that I had on my desk, and I said, you know, everything has got a design. The pen that I'm holding in my hand, somebody designed it. It just didn't happen by accident. And and she wouldn't she wouldn't give me that much. She wouldn't she wouldn't get, she wouldn't agree. I said, do you agree that this do, do you agree agree that this pen had a designer? She wouldn't agree. Because she knew that from there I was going to take her outside. And then when I went and hooked her up, I hooked her up on the Internet, and I said, well, what do you want for an email? <laughs> she said, Darwin is right at seawaves.us. <laughs> and I just went to the computer and typed in, Darwin is right at seawaves.us, ever learning and never coming to the truth. I mean, I'll tell you something, what's happening to me. If anybody in these broadcasts, because one thing about York, uh, he knows how to read. And he does know, he knows, he's got better English than I do. And, and when, I, when, when I say something, I better be able to back it up. <laughs> See? You know, and, and that's the way we all should be that are on this call. See, the people on this call are not are, are not people that, I mean, that, that, I mean, I've learned so much. There's a man, uh, Jesse. I, he lives up in Detroit. I, you know, and and, and and he's a researcher. And, and I mean, he, he he doesn't believe everything Walt Stickle says. See, and I don't believe everything that Ken Hovind says. Because it's not matching up to the Bible. See, in a nice way, one thing about this whole thing when I brought up Ken Hovind was not to run Ken Hovind down. Don't, I'm not kicking Ken Hovind under the bus. No, I'm we running. we more like to help him. That, to come well, out, and I've learned to too much. Out, I've learned too much. To come out of the deception. And um, that's only possible when we write him an invite to come to our show and if he agrees to that. But as I told you, Walt, when we do that, we should put as the subject of the invitation that we want to know his opinion on the Pope's visit on the 23rd of September to the United States of America. The funny thing is, in... Uh, The latest video that he produced uh, last night or the night before at 2.30 in the morning uh, where he was answering some emails and all that stuff, uh, he got a question of his viewpoint on the 23rd of September, but he diverted that to the blood moon. And he didn't even lay the connection to the Pope's visit. And that's why it would be very interesting. We are not, we are not trying to bash people. We are trying to help people. And Kent Hovind is such an important person in this movement, in the Protestant movement, I'd like to say, because he always tries to convert people to Christianity when he does his lectures, which I applause. But for doing that, for doing that, he really needs to have the whole view, and he doesn't have the whole view. So the question is. Doesn't he have the whole view because he is controlled opposition? And was this nine years in prison for him just a wake-up call? Or is he really unknowing? And then he can be taught. Because of all the things in the world, he surely is not ignorant. Absolutely. He's forgotten more than I know. I mean, he's a, 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 I mean, like, like that lecture last night. I mean, I just, like I said, I felt sorry for the, the man that he was, that he was debating. It wasn't even a debate. How do you debate insanity? 
You don't. You don't. I mean, it's it, it's 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 a you, you know. And I think I I feel this way about Ken Hovind. I think Ken Hovind. I think God's still working with him. See, hey, listen. We are some rough characters. When you look at what the Bible, you know, let let God be true and every man a liar. You know, and we need. That's what we need fellowship for. You know. I, or were the reformers were they that far off base that we have to apologize? Do we have to apologize for Spurgeon and Henry Grattan Guinness and Calvin and Martin Luther and Kramer? Do we have to apologize for these people? Is Walt Stickle insane? Or, or is the world insane? This is what we need in this broadcast right here, and this is the reason why I love everybody in here. And listen, what we're saying is the truth. It's hard to swallow sometimes to, to get to put your shoes on, but that's what fellowship is really about. When right. you, because when I learned about Romanism and the Reformation, it rocked me for months. It rocked me. I even had Tom Fresh on a broadcast and, and read it twice. It was it, it, it would drain me because I would see how big the lie is and how plain Henry Grant and Guinness laid it out. You know, I want you know we mentioned this on a on a on a call we the other day offline. You know, you know the most important book in today and age is God's word. And the next one is Henry Grant and Guinness's book. My standpoint since I know that book, yeah. Yeah, and and then the next one is Rulers of Evil. You you digest you digest in other words you 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 anchor into the Bible. You 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 see what's going on. You get really anchored in what 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 the gospel is, what Christ is telling us, and the reason for Christ coming when it was the perfect sacrifice. And the most important part of the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy is the inner page of the book. I've got the gospel delivered by Henry Dratton Guinness. That, you read, I've read that over and over. And uh, uh, by the way, I never did uh, put it up on a website, but I, if you read the the inner cover of the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, I, I, I did a I was in the Bible, and there's he he used over 25 Bible verses to write to write that piece, and the gospel is delivered in its whole right there in the inside cover of the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy. So anyway, uh, so we got another forty-five minutes. Uh, I I, I, I no, didn't mean to 30, take so much time. I 30, didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Thirty-two mean minutes to... we have, but it's all right, Walt. I just wanted to take over anyway, uh, cut this down, and then go to the reading of the Vatican Global Conspiracy. Right. Uh, but um, there are two points that I want to mention at the end uh, for our listeners live here in the chat room, and of course for our listeners and viewers later on of the video on Hour of the Truth. Turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 11. And this is, in my point of view, a very strong supporter of a flat earth. Quote, The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Unquote. Now, how can you see the end of all the earth if the earth is a sphere? Point one. Point two, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus states that every human eye is able to see his second coming at the same moment. How is that possible if the earth is a sphere? As I said before, I don't say the earth is flat, neither do I say the earth is round. I have questions, and these questions have not been answered by the Bible yet. 
so the Holy Spirit has not given me the answer yet. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. I don't even think that it is important. But I do raise these questions when Rome teaches the heliocentric system. And when I know by experience that everything that Rome says, you have to turn around 180 degrees to get to the truth. So when Rome says the earth is a sphere, it's probably flat. But I'm not saying that as a fact, I'm just saying that as my opinion. And the last point that I want to make on the evolution and creation debate is very simple. When you read Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28, when you read Genesis 2, verse 24, or Mark 10, 6 through 8, you will see how the Bible explains reproduction. While evolution has no mechanism to explain how male and female reproductive organs evolved at the same time, the Bible says that from the beginning God made the male and female in order to propagate the human race and animal kinds. And with these few thoughts, I'll leave you on this subject and will now turn to complete the reading of... Um, what we started in the uh, Jesuit, Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy book, we are uh, in the chapter of the Conspiracy of Misdirection. We have dealt so far with uh, the point how the Conspiracy of Misdirection is um, connected towards the Masons, or it was an insider theory, or it is secular humanism, and we still have to go to the usurper theory, which I will be reading right now, or do you have any other closing comment on that subject we were talking about yet, Walt? Well, you know, I, I want to make one quick statement about this flat yeah, earth. please. Uh, you know, um, you know it, it really doesn't matter what shape the, uh, the earth is in. It has nothing to do with your heart, the shape of your heart. But the thing of it is, is this. The thing of it is, is this. Listen, you know, they, there's, there, God's creation, when you, all of a sudden, this is what I say, when you stop the earth, and you, and it's, you know, it's a completely different earth, and I'll leave you with this, if you can, if you can take out your camera, and do a time lapse of the North Star, and everything spins around the North Star. The whole heavens, all the stars spin around that star. Now, when you got that figured out, give me an email. I mean, so it's a, it's a completely, and another thing, too, I mentioned this to a mason one it's, time. Uh, it's maybe the congregation of the north where the throne of God is. You know, I don't know. And I everything, don't know. And everything uh, turns yeah. around God, doesn't it? Well, I that. now there's a lot of common sense in that. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm uh, not I don't know. Just, just, comes to, just comes to my mind when you ask that question. I said, yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 14. Lucifer wanted to uh, sit on the throne on the sides of the north. The north star. So, the brightest star in the sky, isn't it? Could be possible. It, well, it's I don't know if it's the brightest, but it is pretty bright. I mean, I always find it by 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 finding the Big Dipper, in the bottom half of the Big Dipper point towards the North Star. But uh, uh, it's it's a whole nother Earth. In other words, what I'll say this about you know that globe that you got on your desk? We don't look like that. I can tell you that. I can tell you I can tell you that they, that we're not a perfect ball. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, and and they've already proven that whatever it is, it, it's it's this is proven. It's not the dimensions that they tell us. I mean, if you figure out the dimensions, of like, I mean, it's it's been proven. You can you can go you can you can uh, go down to the. I, I live here on the Oregon coast, and you could and a, a boat sailing out over the horizon. You know, it, it's going to go out of sight when we can't see it. But if, if you have 100 people and 50 with telescopes, the people with the telescopes are going to still see it. 
bankruptcy, they're, they're still going to they're they're still going to they're going to see it. I mean, in other words, it's not the it's not the circumference that they're telling us. It's much bigger. It's much it's much bigger. And with God, I mean, God, how, how big is this? And another thing too that everybody everybody's uh, uh, looking up, looking up. What about what we're sitting on? What are we sitting on? I mean, I witnessed a, in 1980, uh, uh, and I had on the July 22nd of, of 1980, I had a chance to go down and photograph Mount St. Helens from an airplane at 5,000 feet. I mean, and, and Mount St. Helens was just a burp. I mean, I'll tell you, it, it's it's a it's a magnificent earth we live on. I mean, it, it's taken, and they've told us they've got it all figured out that we went to the moon. They haven't got high enough. They haven't got high enough to get a picture of a globe because they, they've never been to the moon. You know, years ago you could say that, and as soon as you'd say that, you're you're a weirdo. Not today. Not today. There's just too much evidence out there that they didn't go to the moon. And so, you know, uh, uh, and, and who, what did you, I heard you say the other day, what's that, what's the, what's that definition of NASA? Oh, never a straight answer. Never a straight answer. That's, that's NASA. That's a quote taken from Hoagland. And you know, the other night, I have to throw this in, I was, I was watching, I watched, uh, uh, Apollo 13. Pull that up and watch it. You want to get a good comedy. And you want to see Hollywood is at its best in comedy is, is to watch Apollo 13. You know, what it was all about is people were losing interest in, they were losing interest in all this, all this fake, all this, all this uh, going to the moon. You know, okay, they blast off, they blast off, go up into the moon, get a pile of rocks and come back. Big deal. They got a pile of rocks. You know, when you when you look back and what and what and what did Armstrong say when he stepped on the moon? Do you can you can you give that quote? He said, "One small one step, step for a man, but a giant leap for mankind." Look at the arrogance in that. Look at the arrogance in every single one of those guys that supposedly went to the moon were masons of course that was scripted you don't come up with that when you're on the moon just in a second <laughs> you know i i mean and they got and they got away with it and here here not too long ago oh well, um uh, uh when 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 uh george bush was president he said well we, we're thinking about going back to the moon it'll take us 16 years to come back what they do forget what they did I mean, I mean, I mean. Listen, they don't want to go back to that moon thing because they got away with a big one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look what that did. Look what that did to the mindset of the world. I mean, that was propaganda at its best. You know, and one thing they did, one thing they did in Apollo 13, they did show a, a, the the lunar the lunar lander. You know, I forget what they call that. That you know. But as a pilot, I always tried to figure out how that damn thing flew. I mean, I mean, and, and, and you know, uh, 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 Walt Disney, what was that guy from Germany that, uh, uh, that you know, the, the missile scientist? Uh, Werner, do you remember that? Werner von What's Braun. He? Werner von Braun. Yes, yes. I mean, he was on Disneyland, and they actually showed the lunar landing what the, how they they had that on Disneyland before they did it. I, I mean, you know, the only thing about this is this is where I cherish. This is where I cherish my brothers and sisters. There's only a few of us. They're not buying this stuff. We're not buying all this stuff. I and mean, once we see the lies, once you see the lie here and the lie there, you've got to question. You've got to question some of this stuff, you know. And so, anyway, uh, my my thing on the flat Earth is, you know, uh, you know, it isn't what it, all I'll say is because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know. They've been up to a balloon at 120,000 feet. 
in the horizon just as straight as can be. I had somebody sit, tell me, say, well, well, you can see the curvature of the earth. You've been up on an airplane. Yeah, I've been up on an airplane. You, that, that horizon is just as straight as can be. And you, you, you know something? I want to leave us with, with this. <laughs> really? God, to you? <laughs> God, God is God. God is God. God is, has to have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. He looks down on the earth, and here, 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 a man is all cramped up in in, in a missile, and they're about, they're about ready to light his ass off and fire him up into space. And you know, and I know. I mean, I mean. You can't put it in words, God's creation. And he's looking down at, at man, and man thinks he's going to light a candle on, on his ass and, 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 and go to uh, – three or four years ago, or it's more than that, I, I used to talk to a guy, and I didn't know what I know now. I didn't know any, any history. I'm still dumber than a fence post. But he was telling me all the time that his kids were going to be traveling to Jupiter and Mars. I mean, I mean, people were believing this stuff. You know, it's kind of went by the wayside now. You know, but they they they, they have something else. And one other thing, okay, because what we're talking about here is this. I had a friend of mine four or five years ago. He said, "Well, he said, listen, there's never been a country that's had more psychological warfare on them than the United States." Now I'm going to change that today. There's never been a time in history. That the, that the world has had more psychological warfare thrown at it. Every time you turn that TV on, it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt continually. And what's the latest? It's sodomy. Like sodomy something new. And do you think that it wasn't an accident? how they've triggered this. They've got everybody talking about sodomy and the man of sin and the son of perdition is coming over here on the 23rd. See? So it is important. It is important. And I, and I, 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 I share this with you, with my brothers and sisters on this call. You know, you've got to be wise as a serpent. How's that go? Wise as a serpent, and you're amongst raving wolves. Calm, okay. calm, calm. A wise as doves, and yeah. uh, the other thing you said, yeah, about that. Yeah, you, you, wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, something like like that. Yeah. In other words, when you when you turn the key to go to the store, and when you're out, you've got to be you've got to be watching what's going on. And listening, I tell you, when I go to town, when I get in that car now, I know what's behind me, in front of me, to the side of me. I am paying attention. You and see the world with different eyes. <laughs> and I'm seeing things. I see things daily. I, I see things daily that just, I can't believe they're real. You know, you, 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 you want to, but, but, but I thank God. When a, when a man calls me up from from Canada and he and he wants to know how to print a book, it was some little thing where the margin wasn't right. Anyway, we fixed that and he printed eight books. And I'll tell you, the man, I felt like I knew the man all my life and never met him because he's like-minded and he's got a sound mind. And I thank you for listening to some of this, you know, because I think, that's one of the reasons why we're talking about things that no one's talking about. And when I brought up Ken Hovind, it was not to put Ken Hovind down, okay? I mean, because, you know, but I, 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 I really, it's not to put him down because I've learned from these men. I've learned from Ken Hovind. I'd be, I'd be shooting myself in the foot, you know, but, you know, we have to question what's going on because we know we everybody in this broadcast right now knows what's going to happen on the twenty third. Okay, I mean you you wouldn't have been in this broadcast that long. You wouldn't listen that long if you didn't know. But you have assurance. We have the assurance. We have the authority and the promises that God has given us, and we shouldn't be upset. We sh we sh we should be. You know, push back. This is going to be real interesting how this plays out. 
because we're not going to change it one iota. You know, I, one thing I wanted to say, and I watched, and you, and you, and you sent me the link, but it was on Martin Luther. It was put out by PBS, the history of Martin Luther. Mm-hmm. The documentary, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think if you do a PBS Martin Luther, I think you'll come to it on the internet. It is worth watching. Oh, I can send everybody the link who wants it. I still have it on my channel because I viewed it two days yeah, ago. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, it, 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 it's it, because it's really when I when you, when you see what what the Reformation gave us and why, you know, I mean the the little freedom that we do have today, and the fact that I'm I'm talking to the NATO commander in Brussels who is reading, you know, rulers of evil. And also I'll tell you something else. That man from Brunswick, he sent me a little short email. He said, I'm praying for you. <laughs> he said, you're in my prayers. <laughs> well, I know what he meant. I know, I know what he meant. Can you, can you imagine if and this, this, you know, just think about this. If Ken Hogan, went to the mic on his YouTube and said and, and, and he said, Listen, I got a book I'd like to have you read. Romanism and the Reformation. Can you imagine the impact that that would be? Now Walt and, and York could say that. We have a little listenership, but you know, nothing like Ken Hoven. Ken Hoven has been on Alex Jones, the Hagmans, you know, and he's rubbing elbows with some 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 big boys. Jim Baum Duggett, you know, is is a legislator. Is a legislator there in Arkansas? So he's rubbing elbows. I mean, I'm telling you, can you imagine if all of a sudden some of these mega church mega churches woke up, and the and and the, and the, and the minister, like John Hagee, well, we won't, I don't think there's any way you can wake John Hagee up. Let's, let's strike that one. Let's strike that one. But uh, can, can you imagine what I'm trying to say? If somebody that has a voice would come to the microphone and, and just, you know, boom, like can, the Hagmans. Can you imagine that we would have a Protestant Reformation 2.0, 500 years after the first Reformation? In 1517, Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses in Latin on the church door of Wittenberg. Three years later, in 1520, Martin Luther wrote an open letter to the Christian nobility of the German nation concerning the reform of the Christian estate. This is some 14 pages, and I will do a reading of that as soon as possible uh, when Walt and I agree when on this show. This is how the people were taught even before the Bible was translated in German. What was wrong with the Roman Empire they were living in. And to explain that to you, I will just read the first two paragraphs of an open letter to the Christian nobility of the German nation concerning the reform of the Christian estate. The three walls of the Romanists. Well, who are the Romanists? The term Romanist is applied by Luther to the champions of the extreme form of papal supremacy. The Romanists, with great adroitness, have built three walls about them, behind which they have hitherto defended themselves in such wise that no one has been able to reform them. And this has been the cause of terrible corruption throughout all Christendom. First, when pressed by the temporal power, they have made decrees and said that the temporal power has no jurisdiction over them, but, on the other hand, that the spiritual is above the temporal power. Second, when the attempt is made to reprove them out of the scripture, they raise the objection that the interpretation of the scriptures belongs to one except the Pope, to no one except the Pope. Third, if threatened with a council, they answer with the fable that no one can call a council but the Pope. I'm still going to continue because this is something I really want you to hear. In this wise, they have slyly stolen from us our three rods. 
that they may go unpunished and have incensored themselves within the safe stronghold of these three walls, that they may practice all the nevery and wickedness which we now see. Even when they have been compelled to hold a council, they have weakened its power in advance by previously binding the princes with an oath to let them remain as they are. Moreover, they have given the Pope full authority over all the decisions of the council, so that it is all one whether there are many councils or no councils, except that they deceive us with puppet shows and sham battles. So terribly do they fear for their skin in a really free council, and they have intimidated kings and princes by making them believe it would be an offense against God not to obey them in all this nevish crafty deceptions. Now God help us, and give us one of the trumpets with which the walls of Jericho were overthrown, that we may blow down these walls of straw and paper, and may set free the Christian rods of the punishment of sin, bringing to light the craft and deceit of the devil, to the end that through punishment we may reform ourselves and once more attain God's favor. End quote. And I'm looking very much forward to read the whole open letter to the Christian nobility. And um, I'm really looking forward to that. They were really, I mean, that is how serious... When you watch that PBS documentary on Martin Luther, you, you know you realize the suppression of what the what the reformers were coming out of. I mean, they, they you know it, you you can see the hand of God on Luther that he wasn't killed. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I, I mean it, 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 you but know, John, John the Revelator also didn't get killed. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting line to see that in. But, you know, you have to understand, he wrote that in 1520, even before he translated the Bible, but after the tumult that uh, he caused with nailing the 95 Theses at the Wittenberg door, which would have not been such a big thing. But a hundred years before that, they invented the printer press, and he translated the Latin 95 Theses into German, put them in the printing press, and dealt out the pamphlets. And so the word got really out. And the people for the first time awoke because they were living in the dark age, something that all we are here to gather, gather together in this room today have no idea of how bad that was. Because it was not called the dark ages because the sun didn't shine, it was called the dark ages because there was no light in this world, there was no scripture, there was no conscience. People have no conscience because they were master of their conscience. When the devil is master of your conscience, what kind of conscience do you have? What kind of morals do you have? That's why it's called the Dark Ages. And I think that this work that Martin Luther wrote, um, this is part of a bigger part, this is part of a book that is called um, From the Babylonian Captivity, which I probably will also read uh, one time, <laughs> when I get the time uh, to read the whole stuff. Um, this was even the time before the Bible, and, and with this he ignited the fire. He set the spark. When the Bible came out, it became a wildfire. That's the difference. Yes. yes. And we are so often missing the sparks. And I guess, I, I guess you know, uh, York is, is when, I'm, when I talk at Ken Hoven. I just, my prayers, I just set a little spark off. I mean, I don't, you know, like I said, Ken Hoven is, God has brought him along in whatever, you know, I mean, I just, I just think, because that's exactly what I got out of watching the PBS Martin Luther. I mean, people just don't, and you described it, people, when we mentioned the Dark Ages, we just don't, sometimes we glance over it. I mean, they were dark times. I mean, you you didn't say anything to your neighbor. You went to work back and forth. I mean, it was dark, you know. And and, and we we uh, in this country, <coughs> once you understand uh, in this world what the Protestant Reformation gave us, it brought us out of the dark. 
and into that's the, the reason light. Why into the light, and that's the reason why we got some of the technology where life got a little easier, you know, and, 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 that's, and then we can look back in history, and that's why, you know, Germany has been punished. World War II, see, was a German holocaust. There are three, three very big protestant nations in this world, world. That's Russia, that's Germany, and that's the United States of America. In the First World War, they used communism to overthrow the Russian government, to get them ready for World War II, to put the Orthodox Christians, Rome dislikes against the Protestant Germans, with little help of Protestant England from the other side, and of course, the help of the Americans from the other side, when they entered the war in 1942. Yes. So, this is once more proof that the First and Second World War, the Second Thirty Year War, actually, led in World War II under Jesuit General Ledukowski, was nothing else than Counter Reformation. And that same Counter Reformation you are watching in the face right now over there in the United States of America. And the, par the coming of the Pope in two months is only the beginning. They are going to root us out. Bible-believing Christians have no place in the kingdom of Antichrist. So we are a few minutes before ending. Uh, I just want to go back to the flat earth something because we are talking about that. I will. I would like to give two points here for everybody to consider. And, uh, well, you can write a comment here in the chat box as long as we are live. And, of course, you can also place a comment on the video later that I will upload from the show for these answers. When you read Isaiah 61... The 66, verse 1, quote, Thus saith the Lord, the, leaven, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? And in the New Testament we read in Acts chapter 7, verse 49, quote, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? What's a footstool? Kind of a little bench, right? When you sit a little bit higher, you can put your feet up there and rest. And have a comfortable sitting. How can a sphere earth be a footstool. I'm interested in some questions, some answers, some comments. Let's hear it. And that was not me speaking, that was the Lord speaking. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. So remember when you comment, you comment directly to him. Are there any closing remarks you want to say, Walt? No, we didn't get to usurping the usurping theory, but uh, uh, I think I think in this time, and I, I, I see, I, I look this broadcast now is kind of my time to share what's on my heart, you know. Absolutely, you know, Absolutely. and and that's why I think we we have done from the bottom of my, our hearts. I mean, I I've shared uh, what I what has been going, what, we, what we're being peppered with right now. Yeah, the show was not scripted, Walt. I think every kind of, everybody got that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah they, we make it along as we go along, but those are the best shows, at least in my opinion, I think. But anyway, our time is up, and sorry I have to cut you out here, because we have to close after one and a half hours the show of Hour of the Truth on the 23rd of July 2015. Brothers and sisters, two months until the Antichrist comes to the United States of America. Until then, take care. God bless you and bye-bye. Bye for now.